Hi everyone, my name is Vishnu and I'm working as an integration developer in TJ Software Solutions. So today I'll be discussing about how we can implement ODATA API in MuleSoft. So first let us understand what is ODATA. So ODATA stands for Open Data, which is an open protocol to allow the creation and the consumption of queryable and interoperable RESTful APIs in a simple and standard way. So it defines the best practice for building and consuming REST APIs. ODATA is basically a subset of REST which can be used either for getting the metadata related to the REST API or for querying the particular data. There are four fundamentals of ODATA, which are basically starting with the ODATA data model. The ODATA data model is a server side model. That is the particular data set is only available on the server and the client will only know the currently visible or the requested data. Now the operations such as sorting or filtering can be done for this data, but that should be done on the server side. So the client will send a request to the server and it will show the return data. Another key aspect of this model is that there will be an ODATA metadata document which will describe the entity data model for a given service. Now coming to the ODATA data protocol, this enables the client to make requests and retrieve responses from an ODATA service which will include the CRUD operation which is the create, read, update and delete operations and ODATA defined query language. Now the auditor service can be represented either in XML or we can uh, have JSON. Now there is something known as the auditor client libraries. These libraries will enable us to quickly and uh, easily access the uh, auditor APIs. And then the fourth fundamental is nothing but the auditor service. So simple auditor service may consist of just a feed or more sophisticated services can have several feeds. So in that case, which is useful to expose a service document with the list of the top feeds so the client can discover them and find out the ad and address each of them. For example, now if I uh, go to this particular URI, you can see that at the end we have auditor.svc. This will identify the service document for a sample auditor service. Now, how we can implement this auditor API in Mule 4? So there are some steps. So I'll be uh, guiding you through the steps, then I'll go for the practical implementation. Now, the initial step is we need to install a plugin uh, in our Anypoint Studio that is needed for the ODATA. Now, once we install the plugin, we need to define the model. So first initial step is to define the model. Once we define the model, the model will be in the format of RAML. So using that RAML, particularly we can create the ODATA API which will create the flows. So while implementing the API using the RAML, there will be two elements that will be created. One will be a RAML file. So this RAML file is a documentation for the RESTful API. So whatever entities that we have defined in the model will be available as resources with proper CRUD operations, both at the collection and the element level. Now we will have an API.xml, which is similar to our flow.xml that will create a flow by using the API kit and it will have an entry point that is the HTTP entry point. And there will be different flows that will be scaffolded according to that particular uh, model we have defined. So once that is done, then we need to implement the particular uh, functionality that we are trying to fetch. And once the functionality has been implemented, then we will deploy it or we will run the uh, Mule application. Either it can be using the Mule uh, embedded runtime or it can be for the cloud app. So once we deploy it, there will be two endpoints that can be accessed. So there will be a slash API, which will be the Rust API endpoint, and there will be a slash API slash ODATA.SVC. So this uh, slash API slash ODATA.SVC will be the endpoint for accessing the ODATA API. Now we will see how we can implement this by using the endpoint studio. And if you can see, there is a help section, and inside that we have install new software. So once you go inside the install new software, here you can see that there is a type or select a site. So here you need to paste a link. And once you paste the link, you will see that there is a plugin. So first of all, you need this ODATA plugin so that we can create a ODATA API. So once we uh, create the link and paste it here, then we will get this particular plugin and we need to install it. So once it is installed, then the second step that you, you need to do is to create a particular model. So in order to create the model, I will show you the structure. So as you can see, I have created a model and this model can be created according to our requirement. So my requirement is I have particular uh, EMP detail 
that is stored inside my MySQL database. So if you can see inside my MySQL database, we have EMP ID, EMP name, contact designation, and age. So according to this, I have created a particular model which is containing all the details. Like we'll be having EMP details, and inside the property, we'll be having the particular fields like EMP ID, EMP name, and we'll be having the type, whether it is string or number, and whether it is a key, whether it can be null, and the maximum length. So these are some of the properties that can be uh, defined inside the model. So it can be altered according to our requirement. So once this model is created, then what we need to do is we need to go inside the studio and we need to create a new project. So I have already created a project and inside the project, if you can see, initially it will only have this audited implementation.xml, which is the flow that will be created when you create the project. And inside the resources, you need to create a particular package, which is API. And inside the API, we need to define the audata.raml. So whatever model we have created, we need to paste it here as a raml file. Now, once we paste the raml file, we need to right click that particular raml file. And you can see an option mule. Inside the mule, we have generate audata API from raml type. So once you complete this step, what will happen is along with the implementation XML you have, you, there will be an api.xml that will be created. Along with that, there will be an api.raml and a library package will be created inside which we will have an audit library.raml. So these three uh, particular files will be created inside the uh, particular implementation of the project that you have created. Now, if you go to the api.xml, you can see that it automatically creates the flow. That is, it will scaffold the flow just like when we import it from exchange. It will be scaffolded and all the CRUD operations like the create, the delete, the update and uh, the read, whatever is there, it will be created automatically. These flows are created automatically. Now, what we need to do is according to our requirement, we need to make the changes in this particular flows. So for me, as I am going to deal with the SQL database, I am using an update, delete and select components, which can query my endpoint or query the database basically. So the only change you will need to do is once you are querying it, like I'll be demonstrating how we can get the particular details from the table. So once you are getting the uh, particular data by using the select, we need to have a transfer message and we need to make it into this particular format because whenever we are getting the order data inside the order data, it will expect this entry stack and the payload should come inside the entry stack. Then only it will be able to fetch the detail. Otherwise it will, it will show an error. So now once this particular implementation is done, we need to just deploy it. So for uh, now I have already deployed this particular application. Now, if I go to my Postman, as I told initially, we can have uh, two different endpoints. One is having slash API and another one will be having slash API along with odata.svc. So now if I hit the slash API, so it is a basic, rust api and this uh, rust endpoint will fetch me the employee details so what are details is there it is fetched now if i need to get the particular service details then i need to query this particular endpoint which is audata.svc and if i query it you can see i got the service name that is emp details if you have multiple services it will also uh, reflect here now if I need to get the metadata related to my audit API, then I can just query this particular dollar metadata endpoint. So once I query this particular uh, dollar metadata by using dollar metadata, if I query this audit.svc, you can see that whatever we have written in the model, that is the dot uh, raml file that we have wrote, that details will reflect here. Like EMP details I have mentioned as the entity type, then I will be having a key which is EMP ID. Then I have different uh, field names which are nothing but age, contact, designation, EMP ID and EMP name. So all those uh, details related to the particular Audata API that is specified in that RAML will be reflecting in this particular call. Now, if I use retrieve by ID, so this retrieve by ID is nothing but I am trying to query the endpoint by using my Rust API. Now, if I query this endpoint, you can see that I am getting the particular entries and I am getting the EMP name, EMP ID and contact. Now, if I go to the audata query, right, this query is basically like same Rust API you are querying, but you can see the difference uh, when we are querying it. Like if we hit the same request using the Rust API, we are just getting the particular payload. 
for the exact output. But if you see the OData response, you can see that it is coming in an XML format, which is having all the details, all the metadata related to the particular call. That is, I'm getting the data along with the metadata related to it, which is having a particular ID, which is the link, then the timestamp, then I am having the particular data present inside it. So that is one unique thing about OData. OData will always give the metadata related to it, and you can use it for querying. As I showed you, you can query the endpoint by just making changes to the endpoint uh, that URL that you are giving. Along with, it will give the metadata related to whatever response you are getting. Now, if you see every ID is there, and ID is having a particular uh, 103 or uh, this, there is one link that is coming with the ID. So if you use this link, and if you hit the API, you can see that that particular uh, employee detail, I am only fetching that particular employee detail or I am able to filter that detail according to that ID itself. So this will be the format that you need to send. Now there is one more thing. It supports some filters. Now if I need, like as I told, it is coming as an XML. So by default, we will get an XML. But if we need to change the format to suppose JSON, then if I just use this dollar along with format, and I'll give the format that I require, that is JSON. And if I send the request, whatever XML you got, you will get it in next, uh, like JSON format. So these are some of the filters that you can apply when it comes to O data. And you can see, like, if I am getting the data, it is getting the metadata along with the payload that I am expecting. So that is the peculiarity regarding O data, which is basically a subset of REST. Now we have different filters that we can apply, like top then we have select. So these are some of the filters that we can apply over it. And we can get, we can query the uh, particular endpoint as well as we can get the metadata related to that endpoint. So that's all about OData and how we can implement OData in Mule 4. Thank you for watching.